Hi right, guys, Hatch Crown again today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. Dashi's had a few words to say for Clayser and shot his body as well. At an interesting time for the Royal Ravens after many think they might need to make a roster change over the Christmas New Year period, especially after Clayser got slammed by two of his biggest rivals in the CDL in back-to-back -back matches last weekend. Very much to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I greatly appreciate it. this. I believe is spread more than likely back in Australia because I can't imagine there's too many places that look like this at this time of year unless I suppose you're in the southern hemisphere and I believe this is probably the case because I'm pretty sure he was playing some BPL 8 yesterday in the Australian BPL that's actually kind of popping off and this is just a funny print scoreboard really guy goes 25 in 2 now this by the way is the new sub base hard point it's no longer as crazy as it has been previously with the way the spawns now operate this is the new patch update we might see more sub base as a result you still can drop some kills and this game of course was quite quick 250 to 70 but like you know, there was eight on the team that won, there was six and six on the team that lost. So, you know, we're probably no longer going to have the absolute bang outs that were pre patch sub base. So, the current record of 40 kills set by Diamond Con, Fame, and somebody else I kind of forget, unfortunately, on sub base so far might well be upheld for some time. And the current kill record is Simp on Karachi Control with 42. So, I'm not sure unless Greece is, well, we'll see about if Greece even arrives. But if it does, Maybe there's a chance there. But anyway, Pred goes 25 in two and uh, he has one second in the harbour, which to be fair is more one second more than this plug guy on the other side. But this is the way that Pred likes to play. We'll see it actually in some of the objective numbers in a second. It's, if Optic can just let Pred do no objective work, then I think that's their job pretty much very well done. It's also not far over a month until the Boston tournament. I've got to say, I quite like this graphic because, you know, they've made it look rather cold out, which is exactly how it is more than likely going to be. Last year was insane. There was a storm that came through you guys probably remember right scumper just retired and they were going to do the watch party for the first time in person at boston's major two as it was last season but um this year of course it's major one because there's none in december like there was last year at raleigh you guys know how it went but scump tried to get there and you guys remember like all the flights were cancelled out of dallas because there was a storm coming through they couldn't get their equipment there so eventually they just called it off and um, did the watch party from back in texas instead hopefully the weather isn't going to be quite like that this year it's going to be cold like we expect it to be cold if you go there in January but you know not that cold would be nice we'll mention though as well that the actual viewership the peak viewership was up week two compared to week one now it's not like it was necessarily up across the board in terms of average stuff but the Seattle Optic game did pull in about 170 or 140 sorry thousand views 137 ish thousand so um, you know that's not too bad maybe part of it is that it goes up week on week as people discover that it's on YouTube again maybe but also you know even Vegas Miami had like 77k apparently so I guess it's not too bad it's still not quite what it was on Twitch and what it could still potentially be on Twitch and Scumbag said multiple times that he gets frustrated that he doesn't stream on Twitch he knows that loads of people are looking at his Twitch page thinking where is this guy and <laughs> Scum's not on for the day all right fine I guess I'll go and do something else not knowing that he's live on YouTube doing what he's previously done so um, it's of course frustrating he he was able previously to do both right he was able to stream on twitch as well so he could keep up some sub revenue and stuff like this play some adverts but that was just the face cam and then obviously people would figure out watching his stream that okay he's probably doing the watch party or the you know they would make it quite clear that he were doing the watch party on youtube with the actual video itself of the gameplay so that worked quite well but then of course the cdl said no scum you can't do that anymore the um, effectively the contract for doing a watch party is that you can't co-stream anywhere else no matter what you're doing and that's when all the drama resulted whether there's going to be any change there probably not but um you know the cdl have certainly put their foot down on this one so yeah these are just some of the numbers it's not bad i mean like major one's going to be good later today we'll have a look at some of the spicy matches i suppose from now until the rest of the major one cycle concludes but um there was also this clip going around so a couple of things from Dashi's stream over the last couple of days this I thought was rather interesting really of the rival now to be honest the rival is an interesting spot as a weapon just because it kind of gets if you look at the stats of the players that are full-time SMGs in respawn they are kind of getting fries the best performing players arguably right now almost the flex players now the flex in this game is kind of like your third AR right because you're usually having two ARs and then either two subs or one sub so that player that's kind of in the mix of using the rival and the SMG or that using the rival and the AR 
they tend to be doing pretty well, but the full-time SMGs in respawns are still kind of getting fried, with the exception maybe of somebody like Kleenex, but even then I saw him using MCW occasionally on a map like Subbase. But um, the rival does kind of fry. It's definitely not as ARs of a game as maybe it seemed to be when it first came out, but, you know, the stats still do play out that it is an ARs game at the moment. And to be fair, we see interesting trends in the this is objective work effectively so far this year. So as I've said before, before, if you're optic, and it seems like they've realized now, and the way that Shotzi's discussed this over the last few days as well, let's allow Pred to do the least potential, like possible objective work. He has, I think, 29 seconds in hill Pred per 10 minutes, which is seconds lowest in the league apart from Scrappy, which is kind of surprising. We talked about yesterday, but um, it's the same story for Pred in, in control, right? And it's the same story I imagine for Pred in, in bomb plants in search and destroy. Like the guy has some of the lowest um, tiers capped per round in control only to Hydra which is quite interesting the comparison because we've made plenty of comparisons between Hydra and Pred as players over the last couple of years and it seems like they have relatively similar philosophies as well in terms of how they're going to do the objective work i.e. they're not going to do any objective work and Dashi is picking up a lot of the tiers captured per round actually because Diamond Con and Estriel and the guys on Grillers have been so good at control they're actually here at second and third but Insight is the highest um, I guess tiers capped per round I think Octane used to lead this stack quite a lot as well in the last couple of years but of course he's now retired so yeah Pred and Hydra in here and then Bomb Plant to get Shotzi right at the top of the list so this is like you're almost seeing with the smoke grenade back in play what Shotzi used to do in MW19 on Dallas Empire he would just you know chug a smoke down get the bomb down and still would do very well in search I don't think his KD is still quite the highest I think in the first weekend he had like a 1.7 in search I think it's more like a 1.4 1.5 now which I'm not sure is technically the highest in the league maybe lucky and metals are up there but it's still very close so Shotzi's kind of doing it all in search and destroy getting the rock down or whatever they say nowadays I still wish that on the breakdown at some point they get a segment where money be they get him to like analyze search and destroy rounds I think that'd be so good I, I can't wait for that I'm sure they must be thinking about it I just want that to happen at some point now a couple of clips to share for you guys firstly this I thought was hilarious I'm not gonna lie with four balls so he stumbles across a developer here in Warzone I guess the developers have their own like dev skin in the game so they realize they're playing a dev now we don't know who this dev is and I'm really hoping this wasn't like Seacott because if it was he's probably going to take revenge out on formal of the competitive scene for a very long time to come and add more doors on every single map possible but I'll share this clip here in a second but there was also this one I definitely wanted to mention for you guys of Dashi up against uh, Clayster in this situation so they're playing an eights lobby or whatever this is and Dashi sees Clay run through this doorway so here we are on Skid Row he goes for the chal he's trying to shoot this guy between this pillar eventually his teammate gets the trade but that's not Clayster the guy who just went down so um, Dashi was like, okay, where is this Clayster guy? He obviously hits the reload here. And then he realizes, well, Clay still has to be close right. And then he just dives out and gets the kill. And he's like, what is this guy doing? Why has he not helped his teammate at all? Why has he made this play? And um, yeah, Dashi with a few interesting words for sure. Is moving. Is there a guy on that shit, Oh, he has the, what's it called, skin? The dev skin. Uh, nobody does he? This. I'll just rock him and shoot his body then. <laughs> Are in the safe it's a dev skin. I saw they got that. Does he, he, he have the camo, bro? Get the gun. Yeah, he has the camo. Fix your f audio and take dynamic out of the goddamn game, <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> I think I just saw top. Yeah, I did see him top. Top clay, weak. Yeah, he is weak as fuck. There's two guys top, bro. They're just being assholes. Like, what, what is your, uh, right? Oh my god, it's such a checkout gunfight. Is, is he still close, right? He is not real. Oh. <laughs> so definitely if there's one play that I think is, um, you know, worthwhile of getting your body shot, this play from Clay is potentially it. Now, it's a tricky spot for Clay, I guess, because, you know, there's people that can come from the low door as well. So he doesn't want to, you know, go and chow dashy and get shot in the side, I guess. And he's not that weak here. Like, he, okay, he's a little bit weak. So I guess he doesn't want to chow immediately. Like, he doesn't want to come right now. But probably by around now, Clay should be, you know, he's still to the right here. He should be full health again. 
then he could go challenge Dashi, especially when Dashi goes for the reload here. Like, this is the time where Clay should probably come around the corner. I guess Clay's trying to hide just because there's so many guys on the hard point. But, um, you know, Dashi knows he's still, you know what I mean? Like, Dashi hasn't forgotten he's there. Like, he knows he's still there. So he just flies out and challenges this and kills Clay. So, you know, interesting play. I guess Clay thought that was his best chance of staying alive and just kind of hoping that Dashi didn't see him. You never really know what Clay was thinking from his point of view. But um, it's just interesting because these two guys, right, Clay and Dashi, they had beef going back to, really, it's the Black Ops Cold War days, the start of 2021, but not even necessarily just that. But there was lots of talk at the start of that game. And then in the recent couple of months, really, we've seen Clay and Scrappy have been certainly getting into it. So um, this was the start of 2021. You guys probably remember when Dashi, if you guys have been around a while anyway, they did a tier list video optic, and they've never done this since because I think that it just caused bad juju for them, basically. But they put Clay, or Dashi said that Clay was like a C tier player, something like that, on the early part. I guess it was on the subliners at the time. So, you know, Clay then claps back, and uh, then obviously Clay then DMs Dashi to be like, hey, you know, I'm just making for impressions here. And then Dashi exposes that. And there are a few more replies to this, and Clay basically says, which version of Dashi should I be scared of? The one that's been benched or the one that just plays for kills? And then, um, you know, Dashi said, I want to see how you do with no Zia or the Tiny Terrors. And I think even when the, what was it, the XM4 got GA'd a couple of months later, there was talk from some of these guys that, oh, yeah, you know, without the XM4, certain and players aren't going to be as good anymore and all this stuff. So between these two, there was a, a good bit of beef really over the last couple of years. And then in the recent couple of months, we have seen Clay and Scrappy get into it a fair bit, right? With um, Clay saying to Scrap, you'll never get to our match. You'll never get the championships won. You'll never get the world championship rings, all this type of stuff. So they go back and forth. Now, look, at the end of the day, Clay's 31. He's not exactly going to be in his prime anymore. Can he still be a very valuable asset to a team? I think absolutely. But um, is he the same player that he was? 10 years ago, probably not. And the tricky thing is for Clay that they just got body slammed last week by both of these guys, right? They played uh, they played Ultra in, um, I guess, the Monster Energy match or whatever. I think Shotzi talked about that the other day on the final game of the, well, actually, yeah, I think it was the final game of the Saturday. So, um, yeah, they slammed in this series super hard. And then they had to play, unfortunately, the Ravens the first series Sunday against Optic and got slammed there as well. So, kind of two back-to-back -back relatively big rivalries for Clay play between himself and Scrappy and himself and Dashi as well, which is, okay, not maybe as big of a deal nowadays as it was a couple of years back, but um, it's still something to think about. And, you know, then it would have mapped in this series. It has opened the door to questions as to whether changes are necessarily, you know, needing to be made. Obviously, Gwyn is not going to go anywhere. I don't think Clay's going to go anywhere. But, you know, looking at the performance of Goderek so far and the performance of Real so far, you can certainly see why people think the Ravens might need a change. I guess it depends how things go. Like, we've seen Preds, like, back in Australia, right? So, Opti are going to have, obviously, a few days of practice over Christmas. I guess they'll get back into it whenever Pred comes back in. You know, you'd think he'll come back slightly before the new year. So, obviously, other teams are still practicing. They're still getting time in. They've got a lot of things to work out, Carolina. And I think there was talk from, maybe it was Kenny that said, they just have no confidence, really, the way that they're playing. And maybe you can get that back. But um, Clay is the type of leader where if things aren't going so well, I don't always think he's going to inspire confidence in the team. Like, um, he's very vibe dependent, I think, sometimes. When if the vibes are great, Clayster is a massive amplifier to that and can take you to good heights. If the vibes aren't so great, I don't think Clayster is necessarily going to be one to resolve that situation. That might be on, you know, the coaching staff and other members of the team to sort those uh, you know, bad moments out because when things go wrong, Clay's going to let you know why things went wrong and, um, you know, the frustrations can pour over at times. That's just the character that Clay is. So if you're getting slammed week in, week out, it's not necessarily a recipe for success to such a degree that even if a roster change isn't necessary, it might get to the point where the vibes are just so chalked that they need to do something. So I don't know, they'll think about it. I definitely think that of all the teams, Ravens will be the one thinking about it more so potentially than others over this um, break period. But then again, who do they even get? Like, what is the change that you make to try and fix that unless you bring Donny Temp in for you know, got a Rex, which maybe is, is an option, but then it becomes a very similar team to last year's Vegas Legion. And of course, they didn't quite make it to the World Championship. Speaking of Dashi, I thought this is kind of uh, crazy, really, that of the respective Black Ops 4 teams that Dashi and Cell were on, only those players are remaining. So this, of course, the Optic team at the time, even TP as the coach, but TJ's now in challenges, Skump, Karma, Crimsic's all retired, Dashi remains. And then of this team, we've got zero here, you guys can't quite see. But he's retired. I mean, obviously, Celium stays, Zuma's now retired. 
sides, scraps in the seam. Okay, it seems in challenges, but you know what I mean? Like of all the players in the pro league, then, um, you know, it's only those two left, which is kind of crazy. But very much on Twitter, your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.